we now we started. Okay, now so welcome everybody to the Thailand International Mathematical Olympic Mock Examination 2020 to 2021. Now this paper is for primary three and it consists of five different topics. Five different topics. We will talk about each topic in the same order as the as the mock paper and after we have talked about there's six questions in each topic and after we talk about the whole topic we will give you some time to ask me questions so let's let's go let's do not waste our time and now we'll go to the first question okay question one today is saturday what which days of week was 11 days ago 11 days ago so this is this question is a is a simple one we can do this by just listing all the all our all our different different days of a week so we, we know that a day starts from sunday and then monday and then tuesday wednesday thursday friday and then saturday right oh so you can see it now today's according to our according to our questions today is saturday today is saturday so let's give it a star today is saturday so what is the day yesterday what is, which day of a week was yesterday it should be friday, should be friday, friday. Right? so the day before before yesterday is it Tuesday. So two days before is Tuesday, three days before is Wednesday, four days before is 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 Tuesday, five days before is Monday, and then six days before is Sunday. And then we can go on and on. We know that nine, ten, and then we'll go to eleven. Eleven. What day is it? What day is it? It's Tuesday. Is it? Tuesday. 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 Okay. Tuesday. That is Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Very good. Very good. Now, please answer our, uh, my question in the chat room instead of using the mic, because I'm afraid that if many students are, are answering uh, answering me, then many other students cannot listen listen to my voice clearly. Uh, and thank you, man. I uh, thank you all of you to uh, for answering my question. The question. The answer of question one is Tuesday. Now, if now somebody would may ask that, well, actually, it there is a better method to do this before because we know that we know that because every fourteen days is two weeks, so that fourteen days before is also Saturday. So then we just need to get we need to count three more days. It is one two and three then we will get our result is also tuesday right okay as low well, is there any questions is there any questions could you type them out yes. tuesday very good very good so can, the, no, can, I would just want to say, can, can we do like this here uh, like 11 days 11 divided by 7 and 14 like it get remainder of four so oh yes you can also eight. do this you can also do this you can also do this. In fact, it is the proper way to do this, like but she... but it takes more time. It simply takes more time because you, you don't need to divide it because if the number is not 11 days before or sometimes it may ask 100 days before, then you need to divide it because it is impossible so you can't. But if it's just 11 days, it is actually better for you to just count it because it is faster for you to calculate faster for you to count it than to calculate it all right this is question one question one the answer is tuesday okay now let's go to question two question two according to this pattern what how many circles are there from 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 left to right from the first symbol to the 72 72 symbol now since there we are talking about We are talking about the pattern, right? We are talking about pattern. So now 
we need to ask the question, what is, what is the pattern of this? No, no, not, not the whole, whole thing. What is the pattern of this, of this, of all this, of this diagram or of yeah, this program? It should be, it should be, yes, exactly. Because now if we, if we look at the, if we look at the, if we look at the black rectangle, yeah, circled by the black rectangle, we know that, we know that it was just keep, keep doing this five, that five, five polygon pattern again and again, right? Again and again. So we'll just always circle, square, square, triangle, circle, and then circle, square, square, triangle, circle, circle, square, square, triangle, circle, and then so on and so forth. All right. Okay. So even even no. Uh, okay. So 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 okay. That's that's okay. That's okay. Do, do, I don't don't need to don't need to uh oh. Don't need to don't need to circle them all. Don't need to circle them all. Please do not circle them all. Now, now let's count how many circles are there in a pattern in a pattern. So we have a circle at the very beginning and have a circle. At the end, so we have two circles in for every pattern. For every pattern, there are two circles. So how many patterns are there in in seventy two? How many patterns are there in seventy two? Since seventy two, if we divide them by five, we will get is fourteen, and then we have one. Fourteen, we have oh no, not one. Two. Yeah, you should be two. Yes, you should be two. We get oh, uh, it is seventeen divided by five. It should get you fourteen, and then 14 two as 18. a remainder, right? So now let's look yeah. at this fourteen. Fourteen or for what? Fourteen of fourteen pattern, right? Every pattern is just like this. We we'll have two circles, right? We have two circles. Times so two. This, so we have times two, right? Times two. So it should be plus two, two, which is equals to 28. But it is all for a full pattern, right? For a full pattern. How about this two? So we now we have one and then two. Two more graphs of which one of them, one of them is actually circle. Oh. So we have 28 plus one, which it will equal to our answer. So our answer is 28 29. plus one equals to 29, right? Yes. It's just like this, just like this. So very good. So it would be very nice if all of you can stop talking now. So I, 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 I'm sorry, but I, I will mute all of you now until the break, until the break, so. All right. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, now, please go to the next question, okay? Next question. Okay, question three, question three. According to the following pattern, 17, 25, 44, 44, 55, what is the next number? What is the next number? Next number is 67. Very good, very good. Now, every time if we see this pattern of numbers happen, we ask what exactly is the difference between these two numbers? What is the di difference between these two numbers? Every adjacent numbers. So these two numbers, the difference is, the difference is eight, right? The difference is eight. Now, how about 25 and 32? The difference will be nine. And when we talk about 32 and 42, the difference will be 10. So we see a very nice, uh, I'm sorry, Snow, please do not, do not write 
do not drop down all the all the notes now. So because I, I'm I'm also drawing. So if we knock about 44 and 55, it will have a difference of 11. So in here we see a very, very nice pattern is that the difference is equals to eight, nine, 10 and 11. So what should be the next pattern? The next pattern should be 12, right? Because it is 10, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we know that the next number must be equals to 55 plus 12. So it should be equals to 67, right? 67. All right, this is question three. This is question three. All right. Okay, so, so now let us go to question four. Let's go to a question four. Now, a coin, now this is a, question four is a pattern of a graph. We know that the first graph is a star, one star. Second graph is nine star. Uh, after we, the, we see the third and the fourth, then we know the pattern. The pattern is a big three, right? It's a very big three. A three, very big three, a three, very, very big. Okay, so now if we are if we are talking about the what is the group? We are talking about the seven group, the seven, the seven one. Now this is the fourth one. Now this is the most the rightmost one is the fourth one. What is the seventh one? Seven one. How many stars are there? How many stars are there? Now first we need to see, we need to look at it in this way. Now, every pattern must have three rows filled by star. It is one, two, and three, right? And it's also the rightmost column is all filled by star, right? So we have four lines filled by star. It is three rows, the first row, the middle row, and the last row. And the last column is also filled by star. So now we know that there are four rows, four, three rows and one column filled by star. So now let's look at, let's look at our seventh, our seventh one, seventh one. The seventh one, it must be in a square, right? What is the size of the square? The length, the size of the square. What is the size of the square? What is the length? Okay, what is what is the length of of the size of the square? Now we know that we know that the first one is the first one is one. If one, one times one, the size is one. The second one is three. The, the third one is five. The fourth one is seven. What is the relationship be, between one, three, five, and seven? What's the relationship between one, three, five, and seven? It must be, it, they are all, they are all, odd number. So the length of the size of a square in the seventh one is equals to the seven, seven odd number. Seven odd number. What exactly is the seven odd one number? We know that the first odd number is one, the second is three, the third is five, the fourth is seven. So what is the seven odd number? The seven of number is actually equals to 13. Is equals to 13. So we have a square of length 13. Of length 13. So now we know that. So according to our our calculation, we know that since it's of a length 13, so we it will have the first row 13 star, right? It also had the second row is also 13 star. The last row is also 13 star. 
and the and the last column is also floating star. So we have four floating star, but but there's something duplicate. We we can see that this this star is duplicated, right? This 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 star circled by green, circling green is duplicated. This and these are also duplicated, right? There are three duplicated stars for every pattern, right? So the total number must be equals to 13 times four, but we need to minus that three duplicate number. So our answer should be 49. So very good. Everybody, everyone is, everyone answers a question is correct. 49. It is 49. All right. This is question four. Now let's go to question five. Let's do, do go to question five. Now we are just counting the pattern. If you are unsure about your answer, you can actually draw a graph. So it, it takes a, a sketch paper to draw the graph out. It's very simple. So we will not be preaching here. So let's go to our next question. Our next question is question, question five. We know that when is Wyman, Wyman seven, seven years ago is equal to the age of John two years later. And we know that Wyman is 17 years old now. So what exactly is Wyman 17, seven years old? What's the age of Wyman for seven, seven years earlier, seven years before? What's his age? It should be since it, it is, so, oh, oh, I, I can't see your message. Okay, good. So because Today, this year is 17, right? Is 17. So Wyman seven years ago must be of age 10, right? Of age 10. Of age 10. So, yeah. So we know that John two years later must be of age 10. So what is John today, John age now must be 10 minus two which is equals to eight. All right, now, now let's, let's, let's use, let's use. So because Wyman, Wyman now is 17 years old. So Wyman seven years ago must be equals to 17 minus seven equals 10, right? But it is equals to two years later. So join now should be 10 minus two, which is equals to eight. So our answer is eight. So our answer is eight. It's just that simple. Right, our, our answer is eight. We know the answer of Wyman now, we calculate the answer of Wyman seven years ago, which is 10. And then we know that John two years ago is of age 10. So now it should, it would be of age 10 minus two equals to eight. All right, so this is question five. Okay, so go, let's go to the last question in this part. Question six. In, now in free, in class three A, all students are, are not called uh, uh, queued up from a rectangle. Andy is on the right hand side. So let us draw Andy now. Andy gave him a star. Now let's suppose that stars is Andy, right? All right, the stars is Andy. So now in his right hand side, we'll have three, there are five, five, five pupils, five students. So we have one, two, three, four, five, right? There are five pupils. And in his front is four pupils, one, two, three, four. And the, in his back is one, two, three, three pupils. 
So how many pupils are there? Well, we can we can start by asking, well, how many students in a row? There is, there is, yeah, there is six students in the row, right? There's six students in the row. And then since how many columns are there? How many columns are there? We have eight columns, eight rows, eight rows. So let's draw it now, eight rows. So we have eight now here. So we have eight row and each row it has six students. So the total number of students must be equal to eight times six, which is equals to 48. Eight times eight is equals to 48, just like this. So this is question six. This is question six. Okay, so, well, we have finished it the first six question, first six question. Are there any question? Are there any question? So now, okay, now I just unmute all of you and let you ask me question directly. Um, I can unmute you. Are there any questions in here? Uh, we have finished the finished the the whole part. All six questions. Are there any questions now? Okay. So, Zoe, Zoe, are you? I I I I see people say that I don't get number four. I don't get number four. Okay. Well, let's go back to question number four. Question number four is we know that the first square is the first one. We have a square of length one. Okay, let, let us go. So this is of square of length one. So this is the square of length three. So this is of five and this is of seven, right? This is of seven. So we know that all of the square must be of a length of an odd number. So in here, when we are talking about the seven, the seven, seven square, it must be, it must be of length. It must be of length, the seventh of our graph. The seven length equals to seven, seven odd number, which is equal to 13. which is equals to 13, right? So uh, as long as we need, we know that it is 13, then we can calculate if it's 13. So this line must be of length 13, right? This line is also of length 13. The last line is also the length of 13. So we have four line of length 13. But we have five. We no, we have we have three. One, two, three. Three star, which is a multiple. So we need to we need to subtract it three. So the answer would be equals to 13 times four minus minus three, which is equals to 49. Is it 49 is our answer? 49 is our answer. All right, 49 is our answer. Yes, each time for every square it add two because they they are all odd number. They are all odd number. So for the seven seven square, it must be seven pattern. It must be within a seven a square of length the seventh or odd number. The seventh of number which is equal to thirteen you use different solution, all right? So, but, but, do you understand this solution? If yes, then that is okay. Uh, you, you can, there's many different solutions for the same question. So are there any questions? Are there any more questions in here? Are there any more questions in here? 
If no, then we will talk about question seven to question twelve. All right, we will talk about question seven to question twelve. So we need to mute you, to mute again. Please wait. Please wait. Okay. All right. So. So now let's go to question. Question seven. Question seven. Arithmetic. Find the values of this equation. Find the value of this equation. One one eight plus two four. Now. Every time we do arithmetic, it would be nice for you, for us to actually list all the numbers out. It would be nice to list all the number out. All right. Now, after we need all this number out, we need to add these six numbers together, but we do not add them one by one instead we use a we use a different method is that we add up all the digit of a corresponding number together let's say we add up all is list efficient it lists significant digits first we add up all is list significant digits first now we have eight plus four plus one plus two plus nine plus six what is the answer The answer should be thirty. Yeah, Zoe. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I know, I know that you answered it. I, I can see your, I can see your, your mouth movement. But I'm sorry, if I'm, I'm muting all, 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 all the students because I need to talk about. Yes. Now, okay. So there are many students that talk about the answer. The answer 1, 1480. True, very true. Now we will talk about that. Why? Now, but we first we first add up all the single digits, we get 30. Now, why? Why is 30? Because we can actually do it in a simple way, which we call a combined by combined to 10. What does that mean? It means now, because if we now talk about if we sum up eight and if we sum up eight and two, we get a 10, right? If we sum up nine and one, we get a 10 also. If we sum up four and six, we get a 10 also. So five, three 10 will get a, you a 30. Three 10 will get a 30, all right? So now we have we have added, added up all the list of the significant figures. Now, let us add the next one, the next significant, the next, the middle one, 176164. What is the sum? 176164. Again, we see that there are six and four, we can cancel it out, you get a 10, and then we get a one time, one plus six plus one is equal to eight, plus seven, hence we get our answer is, our answer is equals to 25, 25, 25. Now, remember that this 25 is actually means, this actually means 230. Two hundred and fifty. So if we add up all this, all all this number, we get two hundred and fifty. All right. So now the last part, we add up all the most significant figures is one two two three one two three. So we now have two one two two and two three. So if one plus two plus three equals to six, then 
two one plus two two plus two three must be equal to two six. Two six. What is the answer? Two six is equal to twelve, right? So this here is equal to two thousand and twenty. One thousand and twenty. So at the end of the day, it it all equals to three numbers add up together is one thousand twenty plus two thousand thirty plus three. 2050 plus 30, so it is equal to 1480. It's just this number. Now, someone will talk about it pairing this number. Yes, you can, but there is not a good candidate for pairing because they cannot sum up to a very nice 10 or 100 or 1000. So it would be more, it would be nicer if we add them up by digit like this what night what i've shown you now all right or that i'm so now so this is question seven this is question seven the answer is 1000 and 1480 1480 now let's talk about the next question find the value of now this is a interesting question because this is an interesting Question: Because every one of them, every one of them is of a difference of two. So this is what we called a. This is actually all of them are of equal difference. Is are of equal difference. If we are adding up numbers of equal differences, this is. Actually, we will talk it is a, we will talk it in, we, we talk it is, is a ar arithmetic series, arithmetic series. Now, the sum of arithmetic series is equals to arith arithmetic series. Sum of arithmetic series, there's actually an equation for it which is equal to the which is equals to the first number plus the last number the last last number multiply the number number of turns and then divide by 2 and then divide by 2 okay so in here, so in here, what is the first number? The first number is six, right? So this number, so this number is six. So how about this? The last number, last number is equals to 28, right? So we write that down is equals to 28. Okay, so my 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 drawing is not good not good enough so let's use then use our print as that so this the first number is equal to six the last number is 28 number of turns how many how many numbers are here are there in here in, in this series how many numbers are there so we, we can count it immediately right so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve now there are actually different ways to do this, but now it is easier to count them, count them, count them immediately. All right, so it's easier to count them, count them directly. So we get that the equation must be equals to six plus twenty eight times twelve divided by two, so which is equals to 34 times six, which is equals to, which is equals to 34 times six, which is equals to our 204. Yes, hence this is our answer. Answer of question eight, 204, 204. All right, 204. Now, if it is okay, then we go to the next question. The next question, find the value of this. 
Now, actually, in this question, there are not no no simple way to do this. Well, you can sort of sort of simplify it by writing it as nine times four. Then you can combine this. You can sort of. I mean, you can. Uh, you can sort of do this. You can say that this is nine times four, and then you can, and then you can combine this nine to the to the second term of nine, join all the nine together, and make it nine times nine plus thirteen, and then you will get the answer is equals to one one one. Or, or if you are like me. Don't want to do this in a di so different way. You can do it directly, right? Eighteen times two is equal to six. Now the second term is equal to nine times five is equal to forty-five, and the last term is equal to fifteen times two is equal to thirteen, and then they add up together. It is one one one. All right, simple. There's not much things that you can do to simplify it. Actually, in question nine, so. It is actually better for you to do this directly, because there is not much method. Now, question ten, question ten, question ten. Now, question ten is actually a question put in here just to remind you that something you should never do. You should never do. Ah,、uh, someone talk about sixty-four. Yes, sixty-four. Now, in here. When we are talking about question nine, we say that well, you sort of, you sort of can write this as nine times four, right? And then you can, you can draw out the same nine times, draw this all common factor out, and then you will get, and then you will get something like something nine line. Nine times four plus five, and then you can go. You can simplify it all together, right? But not in ten. Question ten. Remember, for division, there is no way for you to simplify it. You cannot simplify it by drawing common terms together. For division, no, you cannot do this. So in question five, the only way to do this. Is to do all the division first, and then do the sum and subtraction later, just like what we would do in primary one. So when seventy two divided by two is forty six, so the next one is seventy two divided by three is four twenty four. The next one is seventy two divided by six. Six is equal to twelve, and then minus minus seventy two divided by twelve is equal to six. And then minus seven two divided by forty six is equal to two. So this is our answer, and we can calculate it, and then we can get the answer is sixty two. All right, the answer is sixty two. Now please, please, do not, do not try to, do not, do not try to simplify because you see that there are two. Two number seven. The both seventy two are the same. No, you cannot simplify a division here. You can only simplify it a for a multiplication, like question nineteen, question question nine. All right. So this is question ten. This is question ten. All right. So if there's no question, then we go to question eleven. Oh. Now find the values of this. Find the values of question eleven. Find the value of question eleven. Yeah, some people have answered it. Now we know that. Now there's a there's a method that we can do by remembering that there are, there are many numbers that can multiply into into a very beautiful number, like two times. Two times five is equals to ten, or four times twenty-five is equals to one hundred, and then eight times 
one to five is equals to one thousand, etc., etc. Now we have something like this. All these numbers are actually making you making you easier to do the work. Now in here we see we see there are one hundred twenty five there, right? And we have eight here. We have eight. We have one hundred twenty five. So we don't. We can cancel it out. We can cancel it out. We don't need eight. We don't need one hundred twenty five. But but we multiply. We don't need eight. We don't need one hundred twenty five. But we multiply it out by one thousand. We multiply them out by one thousand because eight times one to five is equal to one thousand, right? Again, now we see we see twenty five. Eh, twenty five here. So we need a four. But where's the four? The four is in here. So if we do not need this, need this, we divide this sixteen by four, then we get a four here, and then we can combine it with twenty five. We can combine it with twenty five. We can combine the four with twenty five. Four we have taken out by twenty five, and then we can get a. We can get. A one more. We can get a one hundred here, one hundred, right? So we cancel out the eight and one to five to get one thousand. We cancel out the four in sixteen and combine with twenty five to get one hundred. So what it remains is two times three times four times one thousand times ten times one a hundred. So one time, two times three times four is equal to twenty-four, and then we need to we need to add the zero. So how many zeros are there? So we have three zeros from the thousand and two zero from the from the hundred. So we get the answer is equals to two four zero 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 zero. All right. Two four zero 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 zero, yeah, exactly, exactly as, as. On. As on on uh on Hong Yan, yes, exactly. So we, this is a big number, but this is a simple number because it have many 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 sim zero right. We have many many zero. Now, now at last we let's look at question twelve. Question twelve is a, well. Question twelve is a numbers that we do not, we actually do not have much, 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 much ways to do this. Now later in later in in primary six, primary five and primary six. So then we will talk about this, talk about this again, and we will ask, we will. Talk about there actually is some patterns here, but it is worth not not worth exploring in here. So it's two 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 times twenty two. Then we can multiply it directly, and we can multiply it directly, and then we can get our answer. So first we get two 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 multiplied with our with our first two here, multiplied with our first two here. And then we get the answer is equals to four 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 four. If we multiply by the second two, if we multiply by the second two, then we get the answer would be equals to four 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 zero. Right. So. At the end of the day, when we add them together, we get our answer. Hence, our answer is equals to four eight 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 four. This is our answer. Would the liquid line is that okay? Yeah, this is our answer. We just do a multiplication, but although it's a long one, but it is a simple multiplication. 
It is a known one, but it is not much different from any other uh, any other division out there. Okay. So now we have finished the finished part two of arithmetic. We have finished part two of arithmetic. Are there any questions? Are there, are there any questions for this last, last? Uh, oh, no. no. Okay, no. Kosuke, Kosuke, no. is there any questions? Well, you just no. type three question mark for me. Is there any question for, for question 12? No. Yeah, yeah, I have any questions for question 12. Thanks for help. There are a lot of people from Russia. Yeah, Russia. Is there any question? Oh my god. Oh my god. What, what is the question? Is there any question? If you cannot you if you don't know how to say it, you can type it in in the chat box and I can see it now. Someone uh, send the chat chat box in the chat box. <laughs> I'm stuck on number 10. Stuck in number 10, okay? So question 12, is that okay? Question 12, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. okay. But I don't really ten. Okay, so let's go back to question ten. All right. Now in question ten, we just do a simple arithmetic. We just do it in a in a primitive way because there is no nothing. There's nothing that we can do. We cannot simplify it. So let's do it one by one. Now seven. 2 divided by 2, what is the answer? It is equals to 36, right? So 72 divided by 3 is equals to 24. And 72 divided by 6 equals to 12. So 72 divided by 12, 72 divided by 12 is equals to 6. And 72 divided by 36 is equal to 2. So at the end of the day, what we are doing is just that 36 plus 36 plus 24 plus 12 minus 6 and minus 2. Hence, we have our answer, which is equal to 62. We just do it in the more basic way. There's nothing different. Okay, so uh, I, I can get, I can get the, Okay. No, please, please do not copy the, the checkbox and repose it. So you are just, ah, uh, so no, do not copy the, the check, check box, the contents of the checkbox and then paste them again, because I, I, I've seen it. Okay. I've seen it. So are there any questions for question seven to question, question 12? Slow, is there any question? You raise up your hand. Slow, is there any question? No? Okay. So now let's go back to our question. So let's go back to our question, for question 13, number theory. Now, number theory is less about arithmetic. Now, in question 13, it is actually possible. It is possible for you to calculate the answer and then determine whether it's an odd number or an even number. But you don't need to. You don't need to. Because we can calculate them one by one. Now, okay. So first, seven times three. Is this a odd number or an even number? This is a odd number times an odd number, hence it is a odd number. Right? This is an odd number. So the next one, it is equals to the next next one is equals to eight and six. And it is a even number multiplied by to something, it would be even number. 
So by this, we can all sort out all our, the odd and even for all multiples. Nine times nine is odd. 11, 10 times 12 is even. 11 times 15 is odd. 12 times 18 is even. 13 times 21 is odd, right? So we have odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd. And then we add them all up together. So the only, the only things we need to do is to count how many odd are there because we know the even number when added to anything, it does not change its parity. It, if it is odd, if you add an even number to an odd number, it remains odd. If you add an even number, it's an even number, it's, it remains even. So there's the, the question is how many odd numbers are here? It has an even number or odd number. So we know that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the answer would be even. The answer would be even, even number. So our answer is the even number. Yeah, someone says that uh, uh, rule says that uh, you, you have done something similar. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because this, this mock examination is supposed, suppose that you have, you have, you have seen some, some of this question. It was supposed to do be, be like this, but not quite this question. Okay, this is question 13. Yes, the answer is even. The answer is even. The answer is even number. All right. So now let's look at 14. A and B, the sum of A and B is 84 and A is six times B. Why the answer even? Yes, why the answer even? Because there is there is four odd numbers. So it is that one, two odd number, three odd number, and four odd number, right? We have four odd number. So this four odd number add up together will get a even number. It will get an even number. So by adding with all other even number, it will still be an even number. So the total number would be even, all right? The total number would be even. So, so do I answer your question? Do you understand why question 13 is a even number? Now this, this take, I, I, I need some time to, I need some time. Now, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Thank you, thank you. Many people are, yeah, five times even is even. No, mm, uh, yeah, sort of, sort of, yeah. Okay, so let's look at question 14. Let's look at question 14. A and B, two number. Okay, yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please do not post your answer multiple times in the chat room. So it, because the chat room will then fill, filled up by your answer and I cannot see all, all the answers of different and other students, okay? But yes, because odd plus odd is equal to, to even. So we can count the number of odd and then we can determine what's the answer of question 13. Now in question 13, because A is six times B, so, so, if we write that down, a plus b is actually equals to six times a is equals to six times a plus a, which is equals to seven times a, which is equals to 84, right? Which is equals to 84. So at the end of the day, we just need to divide our answer by seven in both sides, then we get 12. So we know that, oh, 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 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Because I have write something terribly wrong. It should not be B equals to 4A, but instead A, six, A is equal to 6B, right? 6B. So it's equals to 7B. It is equals to 84. Right? At the end of the day, we can now cross out our seven here and then we get 12. So we know that oh, B is actually equal to 12. So now my answer is, my question is, what number when it add, up, add to 12 is equal to 84? It must be 72 because seven, it is equal to 84 minus 12. Right, so our answer of A is equal to 72. Our answer of A is equal to 72. All right, this is question 14. This is question 14. Oh, okay, okay. And for none, do not type out some meaningless question here. No, I, we, I, don't, I don't need the syllables here. Oh, equal? Equal again free question mark. Is there any questions in here? Is there anything that you do not understand in question 14? Could you could could you give it gave me more information other than free question mark? I don't know what it, what that means. Okay, soy. Soy, what what's the question? Soy, what's the question? You can type them out in the in the chat room, right? You can type them out in the chat room. If there's any question, please type them out in the chat room. Okay, now, if there's no other questions, uh, I, I see someone typing them out, number, number 14. Okay, so what is your question? The answer is, you don't understand how the answer is the answer, okay? You don't understand how the answer is the answer. The answer is, wait, wait. That is a, that is a, that is a very strange question. That's a very strange question. Now, okay, now let us repeat our question 14, but we need to be fast because our time is limited. Because we know that A, we know that A is six times B, right? We know that X is six times B. So now let us write that down. A times A plus B is equals to A plus B is equals to 18, 84. Right? According to our equation. According to our equation, a plus b is equal to 84, but what is a? a is 6b, right? Six, hence, we know that 6b plus b equals to 84, but it also equals to 7b, right? Hence, we can now cancel out 7, and hence, we get, we instead, we get, 12. So we know that B is 12. If B is 12, then A is 6 times 12. So A must be equals to 6 times 12, which is equals to 72. All right. This is question 14. This is question 14. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now we go to question 15. Question 15, what is the meaning of this? Now, this is actually very, very simple because we just need to, you just need to replace the A and B with our eight and four. So now we know that A, A this number,
we know that this number is A. And what is B? Four is B. So we just replace it, okay? So if we replace it, we can get, it will, it will equal to eight minus four, eight minus four times, times four minus two, which is equals to four times two, which is equal to eight. All right. And we just substitute the number A equals to A, B equals to four, and then we get the answer. It's just as simple. All right. So question 15 is simple. Now question 16, question 16. One three digit number divided by 18 is equals to seven. What is the smallest value of this small, small digit number? Now this is difficult. This question is difficult. Okay, now in order to know, let us ask the, ask the following question. What is the smallest three digit number? What is the smallest three digit number? We know that the smallest three digit number is actually equals to 100, right? We know that it is equals to 100. So let us now use eight, 18 to divide our 100. 18 to divide our 100. If we divide it, we get, we get, we have it equals to five. And then we get is 900 and then it will have 10, 10 as the, as the remainder. All right, we have 10 as the remainder. So now if we want that number divided and so now this is 10 is the remainder. It is not seven, right? It's not seven. We need to modify it such that it is seven. Now, how can we modify it? By minus three, right? By minus three. If we minus three, this will get, give us our seven. This will give us our seven which is exactly this remainder, right? Which is exactly this remainder. But, oh no, when 100 minus three, it equals to 97. It is not a three digit number. It's not a three digit number. What do we do? What do we do such that it is still, when divided by 18, it will equals to seven. Okay, then, all right. Let us look at the next number which is when it was added up by 18. So we get the answer 115. When 115 divided by, when 115 divided by 18, it will remain, it will have a remainder of seven. And it would be the smallest one because the previous one is actually less than 100. It's actually less than 100. So now we get our answer. We get our answer. Our answer should be 115, 115. All right. Yeah, sort of, you can do that. Yeah, you can also calculate the multiple of 18, which is great. It is a small multiple of 18, which is of the three digit and then plus seven, which is also a very good answer. Yeah, sure, good, great job. So now let us look at question 17. According to the, now, again, arithmetic series, we've, we've talked about arithmetic series, the sum of our arithmetic series, right? Arithmetic sequence, now, what is arithmetic sequence? Arithmetic sequence is, is, arithmetic sequence is that every numbers, every, every, every adjacent numbers will have the same difference. For example, one and seven will have a difference of, one and seven will have a difference of six, right? We have a difference of six. So, 
again, if we have another two, we have like 19 and 15, we also have a difference of six. So they, they are all of different six. So what is the 21st number? So in arithmetic series, we can actually calculate, calculate it the nth number, the nth number, which, uh, okay. Why, why is it full cap? And number, it is equals to, wait, wait, what? Why, 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 why is that full cap? I don't need full cap. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Hmm. Why? Why this full cap? Strange. Now the nth number. How do you can how can you calculate the nth number? The nth number would be equals to two. Is the is the difference times our n minus one plus our first number plus our first number. Now if we substitute all our number, what is our difference now? We know that our difference is six, right? So this is six times n minus one, n is equal to 23. So n minus one is equal to 22. So it is six times 22 plus our first number. Our first number is one. So it's six times 24 plus one. So we know that the answer is equals to six times 22 plus one. Six times twenty-two plus one, which is equals to one hundred and thirty-three. Right, correct. Yeah, exactly, one hundred and thirty-three. All right. So this is question seventeen. Now let's go to question eighteen. Question eighteen. What is the smallest three-digit? number that is can both divide by four and divide by six. If a number is divided by four and six, it must be divided by, it must be divided by, divisible by, oh, okay. If it is, if it is divisible by four and six, it must also be divisible by, By twelve, right? It must because twelve is twelve is what we call the the great this more this least common factor, least common multiples of four and six. So let us ask, what is the smallest three-digit number which can be divided by by twelve? Again, we like what we do in question sixteen. We now get, we now ask a, what is a smallest, smallest three digit number? Small three digit number is 100, right? 100. So we use, we divide 100 by, we divide 100 by our 12. And we, get, we, we then can get, it is eight, we will get 96 and then we will remain, the remaining is four, right? We get eight, 12 divided by 11, 100 divided by 12 is equals to, hey, 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 don't draw, is equals to eight, remain four. So, but this was, it has a remainder of four, it is not divisible. So we need to add an eight more so that it will be divisible, right? So the answer for the final answer will be 100 plus eight, which is equals to 108. 108 is our answer. Yes, exactly. We know that it must be the next number. So it must be 12 times nine, which is 108. 108 is our, is our smallest 
even number which is divisible by four and six. While actually all numbers that can be divided divisible by four must be an even number. So we don't, we do not consider even in, in this case because all number that is divisible by four must be even. So now, so now, are there any questions? Are there any questions? No question, teacher. Are there any questions? No question, teacher. Number 17. Yeah, at number 17. Yeah, I don't have any question. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. If if you do not have question, very good. We will soon start our our next next question. But now let us talk about question 17, 17 first. Now we know now, hey, hey, okay. Okay, what is the we know that we want if we want to calculate the n number, n number. How can we do that? It will be equals to our difference. Our difference. What is the difference? The difference is the difference between the difference between these two numbers, right? The difference is six. So it would be our difference six. Our difference six multiply by our n minus one. Multiply by our n minus one, and then we add the first number, and then we add the first number. All right. Now, so what is the first number? The first number is exactly one, right? The first number is exactly one. And what is our n? Our n is equals to 23, right? 23. So we if we if we add them up, it will be six times 22 plus one. So it will be equals to 133. 133 is our answer. Yeah, exactly. So someone have typed the, the equations in the chat room. So this is our answer. Seven question seventeen. It, it will, should be one three three. Now, okay. If we do not have any any other questions, then we will go to question question nineteen. Okay, wonderful. Question seventeen. I've just I've just just said I've just explained question seventeen. Are there any questions? No, I don't have any okay. more questions. No. Okay. No. No, okay. So no. we now question 17 is let's go to no it, it is 23. Okay. So now let's go to question. Question 19. Oh, geometry. Geometry is a very good, very interesting one. Because it was not difficult. It was not difficult. How many squares are here? Well, yeah, just count it, right? One, two. Now, now let's let's count it by giving a, a heart. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So there are fourteen. 14 small square here, 14 small square here. So is the answer 40? No, it's because there are some square which is, which is bigger, like this one, like this one, like this one. All right, so we have, we have actually we actually we have three more. So it is 14 times plus three is equal to 17. Oh, okay, I, I, I see people, some, some people just say 17. I, 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 I I'm mistaken to say that to repeat question 17. Okay, sorry. So this is question 19, very easy. Just count them all out. It's just that easy. Okay, question 12, question 20. How many square? Oh, that 
is that is difficult. That is difficult. Now notice that it it actually say that you look at this, you look at this, you look at this, this 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 polygon from the right hand side, from the right hand side. So let let us. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, 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 enough, enough, enough. Please do not, do not. Oh, wait. Hey, 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 please, 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 please. No, no, not from the top, right? Please stop. We are looking at from right hand side, not, not from the top, from right hand side. All right, from right hand side. Okay. So if we from right hand side, then we now we we use we use different colors to color the color the our the the different layers of of what we seen. So if we if we look at it from the right hand side, we see that the first layer is the layer of red. Is this is this layer? This one, two, three, four, five, this five square is exactly what we seen from the left. This layer is what we seen. Now how about the second layer? The second layer is the second layer is this. So the second layer will see a bunch of green here. So our third layer is a bunch of blue, something like this. And the fourth layer is a bunch of orange, something like this. So if we draw them out from our right to our left, we'll see something like this. We'll see something like this. Now notice that, notice that how, because of something that was taken out for red, so we have two layers in here. So we have two layers in here because something just sticked out. And because of the things of this long tube. So we get that the green has actually three in here, right? How about the blue, the blue have just it have just one small cube in here. So it, it would be something like this. And at the end of the day, although they are too orange, but they are, if we look at it from our right hand side, we don't see anything. We, because one of them has taken out the other one. Have taken out the other one, right? So we see something like that. So how many square does we see? One, two, three, four, five, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we see seven. So the answer is seven. All right. It is a little bit difficult. So please, please, please take your time and study. Take your time and study. All right. So, okay. Is there any question for question 20? Question 20, is that any question? My own piece, do not draw more on the paper, okay? So if, is there any question? No, not eight, not eight, no, not eight square, just seven square, just seven squares, no? 
are you talking about the, the question of next question? No, next question, the, the parameters is not eight. So Snow, what is our question? We actually get seven, yes, seven. Which seven? Which seven? Snow, look at your left-hand side, this circle, the circled one. This is what we've seen if we look it at it from our right hand side. This is what we've seen. So there's only seven of them. So there's only seven of them. All right, please draw them down. Snow, do you hear me? If you do not understand it, draw the graph down first. Right, seven, you just count how many, Ava? Just count how many square in this in, in, in this diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven, right? So there's seven. Snow, questions trail, question 20. Are there any questions? Now, why seven? Why seven? Because there's seven square in here, right? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven square because this is exactly what we've seen from the right-hand side. So we've seen only says seven square. So this is seven. We just count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Answer must be eight. Now, oh, oh. so you are, you, are, you are talking about the answer in the, are you talking about the answer in the, No, uh, now I see that the mock examination have a have a answer given to you as question question twenty is seven is still seven. No, you just count them out. That okay? So let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next question. Question twenty. Now this is. This is very, very easy. This question is very, very easy. You, you just count how many, count. because we know that this, because we know that the parameters of a small triangle with have three sizes is 18. So what is the length of one size? It's six, right? It's six. So we just need to count how many, how, how many sizes are, are here? So we know that this is one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we it have fifteen. So the answer should be fifteen times six, which is equals to ninety. Just like that. Just like that. You just count out how many how many sizes. Let, like what I do in here. You just count all the stars because all the stars is the parameters of the big, 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 big diagram, right? The, the, big, the bigger one. So you just count how many size because each length is of, each one of the sizes or small sizes is of length, line segment is of length six, right? So there's 15 of it. So it's 15 times six, it's equal to 19. No, not 60, not 60 is 90 because that. No, 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 no. Number trend answer is, answer is seven, answer is seven. Number 12, the answer is seven. If you do not understand, please look back in, in the, can I see the text because I'm from, Belgium? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't understand what do you mean by the text. Do you, now, uh, Mahal, do you have, do you have this, this paper, this paper, the soft copy of a paper? Do you have the paper? Do you have this file? Mihao? Or do, do I pronounce your name? 
Yeah, I, I, yes, yes. I'm talking to, I'm talking to you. Do you have this file? Do you have this file? Every, every student should have the file. Should have this file. So they are, they can, they can, they don't need to look at the screen. They can just look at the file. Do you have the file? How do you have the file? Uh, please do not, do not play with the star. Okay, I share with you now. Next time, please, please tell me every because that I, 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 I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry because, because we have shared this. We have, uh, maybe you come, come in late. So I am sharing with you the files. So please open the file, open the corresponding paper and we will, Yeah, do, can you see it? Can you see, can you see the file? Can you see the file? Please download the file that this file is exactly for this paper. So you can read the paper by yourself because I need to show, I need to show the graph. So I, sometimes I need to cut off part of the English, English question. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I will, I, I will like, how do you go six? Wait, what? Question, how do you got six? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Because a small triangle with a parameter is 18. So what is a small triangle? A small triangle is actually of three sides, which is six, right? A uh, three side combined is 18. So what is the size of one side? If three times some, some number is six, what is what is the size? One, one, what is the name of the size? If three times that is equal to 18, so it must be equal to 18 divided by three, which is equal to six, right? So we get that one side must be equal to six. All right? All right? Is there any question? Is there any question? No. Now, if no, then we, yeah, our time is running out. So we need to go faster. So if we know that, if we know that a triangle have two sides is 16 and 11. Now, this is a very important question. That is a very important question because it is related to a very important inequality, which is called a triangular inequality. Now, please, Mano, be, do not play with our, because our time is run out. Please do not play. Do not play with uh, the screen. Now we have 16, we have 11. We have some length of unknown, let's say A. Now there's something that we have called a triangle inequality. Triangle inequality. What do we mean? It means that every, any two sizes when it add together must be bigger than the and the first side. So in here we get that 16 plus 11 must be bigger than eight. And then we also get that six plus a must be greater than 11. So in here, by combining these two, by combining these two, we get we get a is equal, a is within, we get that six, we get that five is smaller than a, if it is smaller than 17. All right, so, so the smallest number for a is equal, so a, so A must be equal, must be equals to six to 16, right? So the largest number is equal to, the smallest number equals six, the largest number is equal to 16. So what is, 
what's the difference? The difference hands is equals to 16 minus six equals to 10. This is question, this is question 22. So our answer is 10, our answer is 10. All right, so now let's go to question 23. Now go to the question 23. Okay, Nicole nine, please do not play. What is the formula? There's no formula. There's no formula. There's only triangle inequality. Any two sides, the sum of any two sizes must be greater than the length of the first side. All right. The sum of two sides must be greater than the length of the first side. All right. Okay. So let's go to question 23. A prism have two 260 vertexes. Vertex. Now let's look at a simpler question. A simpler question. We know that if a word, if now actually we can do it by formulas. We know that for n, n polygon, that is a polygon with n vertices. For n polygon, we know that a vertex. Vertices is equals to two times n. And its edge is equals to three times n. So by, by the first equation, we know that two times n is actually equals to 260. So we know that what is n then? n is actually equals to 130. So if we substitute 130 in here, then we get our answer. Our answer is equals to 390. Uh, you can say that, but I I prefer you to solve it because we need that for a prism, prism with a n polygon at its basis, it will have a vertex equals to two times n and its edges is equal to three times n. So by solving this equation, we know that n is equal to 130, hence the edge must be three times of it, which is equal to 390. 390, this is tr question 23. This is question 23, all right, question 23. Okay, let's go to the next question. Now, if a, no, now this one is interesting. This one, this one is interesting. Now, first of all, we know that the length of width are integers and we need to know that with a, with a equal parameters, we need this at all. We need, we know that the parameters is 72, but it has the maximum possible error. What is, what, what, what requirement should it satisfy in order for it to have maximum possible area? When it has maximum possible area, it means, it actually means that, it actually means that it must be have the length length and width wait I, I i don't know why i don't know i i, I, don't, I don't know why the it is is like this i don't want to okay so why 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 is full cap Length and y must be
must be close together. What does that mean? Be close. Oh, uh, okay. It now it means that the parameter if uh, if we had get the, get the length get the width they must be as close together as for its areas to be the maximum. Now let us give, since the parameter was a parameter, parameter is equals its length plus its width and then multiply by two, right? So its length and its width must be equals to, its length plus its width must be equals to 37 must be equals to 37, right? Because its parameter is length plus width plus times two. So its length plus width must be seven. If it has maximum possible area, which means, which means that, which means that it must be of as close together. So if there's two numbers, they are as close together and a sum is equals to 36. So they must be equals to about half of it. So what it is? So we, we get that L must be equals to 19 while W must be equals to 18. Because 19 and W equals to 18. So then we get it, the area is equal to 18 times 19, which is our, our answer. 18 times 19, what's the answer? Is 342, 342. Okay, this, this is question 20, 24, question 24. I'm sorry because we do not have enough time. So we I'm we are skipping we are skipping the the question question section that we'll directly go to combinatoric. We because there's many, many things that we need to cover. I'm sorry that I we cannot talk about it more more fully. So let's go to question question 25. Yeah, the answer is three, four. The answer is the answer of 24 is equals to the answer is Question twenty four is equals to nineteen times eighteen, which is, which is actually equals to three four two. All right, which is actually equals to three four two. Okay. So now let's go to question twenty five. In one and twenty, how many numbers? How many numbers can we pick so that at least two? Not there is two numbers such that the difference is four. Now let us let us list all numbers which of difference equals to four, of difference equals to four. So this what we have one, five, nine, thirteen, and seventeen, right? We also have two, six, 10, 14, and 18. And we also have 
three, seven, eleven, fifteen, and nineteen. And at the end, we have four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. All right. So in here, we have this all. We have this all. 12, 20 number. Now notice that every adjacent number will have a difference of four. So now if we just pick half of it, if we just pick half of it like this, if we just pick one, nine, 17, two, 10, 18, three, 11, 19, four, 12, 20. Is there any number, is there any two numbers in this 12 number such that n, there are two numbers of it which of difference equals to four? Is there any? No. Because every two numbers must be either of difference more than four or of difference equals to eight or of even of the different equals to 16. So by picking this 12 number, we still do not have two number which must be equals to four. So it must be equals to 12, but we actually need one more for you to be, be sure that it, it will be equals to this. So the answer is equals to 13. We need one more, we need one more one more number like, like this one. We need one more number such that they will have two number, for example, in here, nine and five, such that their difference is equal to four. So we have the basic 12 number, which have no two numbers is of different four, plus if we add one more, then we can get at least two numbers, which is of different four. So the answer of 25 is equal to 13. So now let's go to question 26. 19 students picking A, B, C, and D. How many students are picking the same? How many picking students are, are ordering the same menu? Now suppose, because we, we are asking at least. So let me ask, what is the situation such that there are least number of students picking the same? What's the answer of 25 is 13, yes, 13. It's 12 plus one. If we have in 26, if we have at least how many students, if we, there is the least number of students, so that it means that the student must student ordering evenly, as even as possible. so that both A, B, and C are roughly the same. So there is no, not a single menu there such that there are many, many students that pick it. So not all students pick, pick menu A, menu A, or not all students pick menu C. So they must be even, they must be even. So how many students pick the same number? Is the answer 25? No. So if we need to be even 19 students, it evenly divide among four, four menu. So we, how many you, you should be equals to 19 divided by four. 19 divided by four, which is equals to four, and we still have three remain, right? So we can, we can let's say we can divide it into, into let's say, Five, 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 four, right? We have A is five, B is five, C is five, and D is four. So at least how many students? At least there is a, there is a five. So in question 16, the answer is five. The answer is five. Because we order evenly so that the most, the most 
menu, the menu that most people taken will be the least because we evenly distribute them all up. All right. So I'm sorry because no, the answer is not three. The answer is five. The answer is five. Why? Because it evenly dis distributing it all up so that at least some people will get five. Yes, five. Because we have at least the amount of students, the least amount of students, because we have at least how many students ordering the same menu, we are asking the menu such that most student taken is the least. So we need to divide them evenly so that there's no menu which has so many people will pay, which will shoot all over, over the roof so that they must be evenly distributed. If it is evenly distributed, it can only be five, 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 four. Some we will get a little bit less. Some many will get a little bit less, just four people pick it, but the other will get five. So the most, the menu that most people pick will get the least, which is five. Okay, so in 27, in 27. Now, Chester still don't understand 26. I'm sorry, I, I will, our time is up. Please, please uh, rewatch what I've said. Hopefully you can understand all of this. Now, what in question 27, what is the smallest five digit even number by using one, five, one, three, five, and eight? So we we just we just write the, the five digit number down, right? So now because we need to be smallest, right? We need to be smallest. So what is the smallest number that can be put in the in the ten thousand digit? That's the ten thousand digit. It must be the smallest number, right? It must be the smallest number. So we know that this must be one. Because we need, because we need this to be the least and the numbers in the right hand, right hand side is to be no, most so that the, this does not influence the whole number, the, the last digits does not influence the number as much. So every number just use one time. Since we have used one, we cross up one. So now the second number was the smallest number we can use. Now the 10,000 digit, since we cannot use zero, so we do not use, but now since it is the smallest, we can use it in the thousand digits. So we know that this is now zero. And then we can, put it in five, three, five, and eight. Because it is a even number, the last lit, it, because it is a even number, e, because it is a even number, it must, the last digit must be either equals to eight or equals to, or equals to zero, right? Eight or zero. but it, it shouldn't be zero. Zero is too small for it. So we pick the larger number, which is eight. So the answer is zero, one, zero, three, five, eight. One, zero, three, five, eight. Okay. So question 28, question 28. How many, how many numbers of three digit numbers such that the, the 10th digit is greater than six? No, we actually, we can count them out. We can count them out. Because we know that, now let's count the last digit first. We count the last digit first. This digit, the least significant digit, it can be zero to nine, right? It can be zero to nine. So there are, actually there are actually 10 
10 different choices, 10 different choices. So write that down, it have 10 choices. Okay, so now let's look at the biggest, biggest digit, the most significant digit. So in this digit, it can only be one, two, nine. It cannot be zero, right? It cannot be zero. Because if the most significant figure cannot be zero. So it can it has only nine different different number which we can choose from. So in here there's only nine choices. Right? Yeah, only nine choices. So at the end of the day, now let's look at the the middle one. Since it must be greater than six, right? It must be greater than six. How many different digits can there be? How many different digits can there be? Since it must be equal to six, it can only be seven to nine. So there's only three digits. So there's only three digits. Three different digits such that it can, it can fill up the middle one. Because it needs to be greater than six. So at the end of the day, we, just, we know that the first digit is, can only have nine choices. The second digit have three choices. The last digit have 10, cho 10 choices. So we just multiply them together and we get our answer. Our answer would be equals to to seven zero, to seven zero. Yes, exactly. Now, okay, yes, two seven zero. Now, uh, question twenty nine. Now, question twenty nine is actually a very difficult question, but I'm I'm. This is very unfortunate that we do not have enough time to talk about this we talk about fully. So I will talk about how you can get the answer, but it is a little bit serious, so bear with me. So now we have four different, different drinks and six different types of toppings, okay? So Peter buy one drink. So how many different ways for, for Peter to get a drink? Buy one drink. How many different, different ways for Peter to get a drink? It has, four different ways, right? Four different ways. Now, how about the topping? Now toppings, now some people, um, how told that it, well, the topping, because we can repeat, so it should be six times six times six. The answer is no. It is not six times six times six. No, it's not that big. In fact, the topping is, has only, has only 56, different ways of doing it. The five different toppings. There are only there are only 36. This free topping has 36 ways to do this. Fifth, no, not 36, 56 ways to do this. So at the end of the day, it would, it should be ha having, no, is it not, not 30, not, not, not 40, too little. At the end of the day, it would have, it will be equals to four times 56, which is equal to two to four. Two to four is our answer. No, not, not one, four, four. Now the answers in the answer sheet, if anyone get it, it's wrong. It should not be two one four four. It should be two two four. No, the toppings can be repeated. It directly say it can be repeated. So no, not four eight zero. It's two two four. Now let me talk tell tell told you why this should be two two four. But this is tedious. So bear with me. Because we list, we need to list them all out. We need to list them all out. So how many ways for us to, to
to choose the toppings. Now, please bear with me. Please bear with me. Now, actually, there are some way to to pick the toppings, but it. Now, suppose suppose there is suppose there is the six different ways the six different toppings which was which we will name it as A two F. Okay. Where do we get the 36? Now we will get it. So how many different ways for us to get a toppling? We can get it as AAA, right? We can get it as AAB. We can get it as AAC. We can get it as AAAD. Yes, I'm, I, I, yes, Zoe, I'm ans I, I, answering your question. So we can get it as AAE, and we can finally get it AAF. So in here, we get all the toppings which have A and has two A's, right? But this is not enough. We can also get ABB, ABC, ABD, ABE, and ABF. Okay, so now we can we can list out all the toppings. Now the pro, the difficult part of it is to list out list out them all. We need to list out them all. We cannot miss any one of them. So if we list them all out, we'll get something like this. And then we get AFF. Now, please let me talk. Let me, let me No, it's not six times six times six. You can, yes, exactly. It is six times five plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one, which is equals to 21. So all this, this is the topping of hack. Is the topping topping is it? This is the topping with A. If we use we, we choose to have topping with A, we get twenty one. But if we choose to have toppings with B, then we don't we don't get twenty one. We just get topping with B B. We don't get twenty one. We just get We just get five plus plus four plus three plus two plus one, which is equals to 15. Now, by here, we need to list them all out. Yeah, okay. Okay, I, I know. So we can need to list them all out, and we will get we will get 36, 56. Yes, okay, no, okay. So 
I'm sorry that I cannot talk about the last question. The last question, the answer is equals to 13 times 12 divided by two is actually something like this. 